If you bleed silver and black, then go ahead and subscribe to the Las Vegas Raiders Report. We are the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube because we're a channel built with diehard Raider fans. If you ever been to a tailgate? You know that crazy Raider fan? That's the kind of people I want subscribing here. So if you're looking for free Raiders videos every single day, scroll on down there, look down below. See it? The big red button? Click that big red button that says subscribe because today's show, woo, we're going to bring the fire. Raider Nation, what's going on? You are watching the Raiders Report. And today's show presented by Manscaped. My good friends, Manscaped, hooking all Raider Nation up with an awesome deal. If you're looking for an awesome gift idea, a stocking stuffer, or you just want your downstairs to look a little bit better, go to manscaped.com slash Raiders, 20% off, and free shipping. So what's on tap for today? Overreaction Friday. Normally after every game I come on Monday, I give you my hot takes. So what am I doing right now? The five biggest storylines that people are going to be talking about on Friday. The first one, and this actually might not even be close, should the Raiders start Marcus Mariota in Week 16, Saturday Night Football against the Miami Dolphins? The reason why you're talking about this, Mariota put on a freaking clinic. Now, you're going to have a lot of losers out there pointing at the one interception because he threw it behind Zay Jones. It hit his hand and was picked off and it put us in a tough situation. But you know what? As soon as Derek Carr went down, Mariota came into the game and he was phenomenal. 17-28, 226 passing yards, 88 rushing yards. He had a rushing touchdown, a passing touchdown. I'm telling you right now, I was ripping Mariota a lot this entire season in the offseason. Mariota, if you want to give me a freaking bird on Twitter, on Instagram, by all means, my dude, you 100% deserve it. So well, the question now that's going to be presented is this. If Derek Carr is fully healthy, and as a reminder, he left the first quarter, pulled a groin injury, and he was not able to play. If he is fully healthy, do you play him? So what I want you guys to do is this. If Derek Carr is healthy for Week 16 against the Miami Dolphins, do you play him? Type DC for Derek Carr, or I want you to type MM for Marcus Mariota. This is why I'm going to go with Mariota, because of this, and it's this only. I want to see whether or not he's going to come back on the football team for next season. Do you potentially keep him or do you cut him and save like $10 million? Because in my opinion, as good as he played, he deserves another shot. I want to see what he has to do. Now, this has nothing to do with Derek Carr. Derek Carr is our quarterback in the future. He's our quarterback in the long term. If Even if Mariota plays well, let's say the next, honestly, man, like the next three games, I'm still going to roll my money with Derek Carr. However... If some of these other games don't go the Raiders' way and they have a 0% chance of making the playoffs, let's see what we got in Mariota. Because I'll tell you what, the only good thing about that Thursday night game was the offense playing inspired football with Mariota. That was it. And I want to see him again because it was hella fun. All right, let's go to the next topic here. Are the Raiders making the playoffs? Well, it's kind of crazy how this one has just spiraled out of control. But there is actually still a one Chucky head percent chance. Not 25%. It's about like... Literally, oh, wrong way. It's literally like 1% chance at this point that the Raiders can get in. They needed to win out, and if they would have won out, it would have been an 88% chance. But now, obviously, you're shooting for 9-7. and seven. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to walk you through the games on who you need to be watching and everything. So here's right now, you're looking at the wild card. The Browns, 9-4. and four. The Colts, 9-4. and four. Dolphins, 8-5. and five. Ravens, 8-5. and five. The three teams that actually matter here are the Browns, the Dolphins, and the Ravens. Now, this still means that what? The Raiders need to basically win out, and that's been the biggest issue. The Raiders have not been winning football games. So let's first start here with the Miami Dolphins. Let's say Miami loses their next three games. They finish the season, obviously not very good. They finish it at 8-8, eight and eight, and then would put the Raiders above them. The Patriots, that's not an easy game. They already lost to New England by 10 points early in the year. The Raiders, we'll see. And then the Bills. I mean, those are three pretty tough games, however you're going to shake it out. But if the Dolphins were to lose all those, that gives the Raiders a chance. So again, I know this is the Raiders report, and I know some people are super, super devastated after the Thursday loss. Man, like, I am too. But you know what? 
I'm going to try to keep my spirits high. I'm going to continue to make videos for all y'all. So what do you think? Predict the Miami Dolphins record. Go down in the comments section. Curly 8-5. and five. Let me know how many wins you think they're going to finish up with. Let's now go to the Baltimore Ravens here. The Jags, the Giants, and the Bengals. Sitting at 8-5 and five as the 8 seed. I, the reason why that Browns game was so big is because if they lose that, they're also sitting there with a pretty rough record, like 7-6, and six, just like the Raiders, and maybe they drop one of these. For me, though, I think the, the Ravens are going to win Week 15. I think Week 16 is their only chance of losing a game. And then Week 17. Worst case scenario, the Ravens go 10. They get 10 wins. It's probably what it's going to end up being. So they're currently 8-5. and five. Let's say they win two, they drop one. 10-6, and six, the Baltimore Ravens get in over the Las Vegas Raiders, which means the last team and the only team that really gives us a chance is the Cleveland Browns, who, well, we've already beaten. That's the only positive note here. Right now, Cleveland is 9-4. and four. If they lose to the Giants, they lose to the Jets, and lose to the Steelers, then they fall all the way down to 9-7. and seven. The Raiders, if they win their next two games, have the tiebreaker. They would then get over the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, though, we need a lot of different things to happen, and I think as a fan, you always want to be able to control your own destiny. The Raiders shot themselves in the foot. They don't have the ability to control their own destiny anymore, so now they need some help. But go down in the comments section. Let me know the Dolphins, the Ravens, and the Browns record to finish up the season. All right, let's go to now the Week 15 games that y'all need to be watching because I know that Thursday sucked and maybe you don't want to watch football. Honestly, this is the time of the year where y'all need to be watching football. You need to be taking down your notes. You need to be seeing what's happening going, ha going on. Because the real fans, the real diehard fans, the people that are actually Raider fans, they watch it out for the entire season. So you got Patriots, Dolphins, root for, again, New England. Jags, Ravens, root for the Jags. Texans, Colts, root for the Texans. Lions, Titans, root for the Lions. Browns, Giants. Big time Giants fans the next two weeks here. Let's go to the next story. Not even a story. The defense is just absolutely trash, and it's going to be the story that you're going to see for the next week, next two weeks, and honestly, it should be the story in the offseason. If I was a Raiders player on defense, honestly, I, I would be embarrassed. I would not go on Twitter. I would not go on Instagram, because for the last week, you see all these players getting upset about people having an opinion. I have an opinion. My opinion is this. You're not good at football right now, so stay off social media. Don't go on it. You don't deserve to be on social media right now, blabbering your mouth, talking about whatever. And if players want to come at me and say that, Mitch, you don't play professional football, you don't deserve to talk about this, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. My job is to talk about football. And then for everyone else whose job maybe isn't to talk about football, you're telling me as a professional athlete, you've never, I don't know, complained about a bad dinner. Are you a professional chef? No, you're not. But by your logic, because... You shouldn't be allowed then to complain about food. Are you a plumber? Have you ever had problems with your toilet? I don't know. These are the examples that come up in my mind. But if you're a Raiders player on defense, stay off social media because you have no reason to talk right now. So grade the Raiders defense versus the – it's an F. It's, it's an F. It's an F. It's a big old fat F, F, F. I mean, that's what it is. Because game in and game out, the offense at least puts you in a, a chance to win. Sure, Mario had a bad turnover, but you gave up 30 points. Again. And when? When it mattered the most. Big time plays. Trayvon Mullen had the worst game of his entire career. It's not even close. Keyshawn Nixon was terrible in this one. It's a freaking F. For some of you, you might be typing D. Maybe it's because you got Manscaped and your D is looking absolutely perfect. Thanks to our perfect package. Get 20% off and free shipping on Manscaped's perfect package. I'm telling you what. I got one of these bad boys. And if I found this underneath my Christmas tree, I might be, uh, you know, doing something a little bit after the presents are unwrapped, if you know what I'm talking about. Lawnmower 3.0 is the best grooming kit out there. Armpits, your chest, your downstairs, it's got you covered. Now, maybe you're traveling. I'm going to go home and visit my family for the holidays. Can't wait. I am going to wear the boxers. That's not for my family. The little traveling case, though, 100% is. I'm going to carry everything that I have in it, no doubt about it. If you wear deodorant underneath your arms, I say it all the time. Y'all, seriously, wear it on your balls. This ball deodorant is just out. It's wild. You know, I don't know if you've ever walked by somebody and you get a weird stench and you're like, what is that? It might be their downstairs. How about ball toner? Somebody was like, Mitch, does this take away the wrinkles on your nuts? No, it doesn't. But it will make them smell a lot better. Bottom line is this. We try to find awesome deals for y'all. 
Sponsors like Manscaped help turn the lights on, and they're also going to help turn your girl on too. Manscaped.com slash Raiders. 20% off and free shipping. I'm going to put the link in the comments and in the description. John Gruden. Is he out thinking himself? I actually think that Gruden is a good coach and that he is a smart offensive mind. However, it doesn't matter if you call a good game for 95% of the game, but when it matters the most, you can't get it done. And unfortunately, that's the situation we're talking about here. Bringing in Mariota, I mean, it was a perfect game plan. The, the Chargers had no idea what was going to happen from top to bottom. The play-action pass or play action, the, the play option, run option, it was phenomenal. It was great. But the play that we're going to talk about, because the Raiders had an opportunity to win this game, it's first and goal at the four. You can't get in the end zone. You kick a field goal. You then rely on your defense. That's absolute garbage, and then you end up losing the game. That happens. However, the play call that I just simply do not understand whatsoever is third and goal from the five. You line up all your offensive linemen together, you have Josh Jacobs in the back, Alec Ingold, eye formation, power eye, like you're on the one-yard line. You then move Jacobs out wide to receiver. You call hike. You take away half the field. You make Mariota throw to one area. He checks it down to Ingold. It's an incomplete pass. It makes no sense for me. Run out of shotgun. Let Mariota make a decision. He was making great decisions the entire game. Instead, you give him one option, one read, and it wasn't there. What more do you want from him? So Gruden... That's on you. So rate John Gruden's game versus the Chargers scale from 0 to 100. Imagine you're a teacher. Imagine you get a piece of paper. 0 is the worst game you've ever seen. 100 is the greatest game you've ever seen. I'm going to give John Gruden an F grade, and it's simply because you didn't get it done when it mattered the most. You showed up to the SATs. You took the test. You did a great job, but you filled in your name wrong. That's where I'm at. So go ahead. Put your grades in here. My last thing, and this is definitely going to get some heat from some fans, and that's okay. I don't do this show to be cupcakes, butterflies, and rainbows. I said it on Twitter, and I'm going to say it again. But the Raiders need to start drafting better. And when it, I'm going to go back to Mike Mayock. Mike Mayock is a guy that you know you bring in, he's got a lot of high hopes, and you're hoping it's great. And after 2019, I think all of us would have agreed, all right, this, this draft class is legit. It's one of the best ever. And in 2019, it was. It was an absolutely phenomenal draft class. But I'm going to try to run through all the picks right here, and you just out loud. I want you to just say it out loud. Good or bad? Cleveland Furl, number four overall. He's a good player. It's still a bit of a reach. Josh Jacobs. It's a good pick. However, it's at a running back position, which is not really an important position on offense. It's an easy replaceable position. 27 overall in uh, 2019. Jonathan Abram. He's right now rated the worst safety, according to Pro Football Focus. Trayvon Mullen. He's been good, but he hasn't been good of late. I want people that can play good at the end of the season, and this past game was his worst of his entire career. Max Crosby, he's been good, right? I mean, he's, he's by far been solid. Hunter Renfro, great, right? Um, I can't even think of the guy they drafted in the seventh round last year. Just goes to show. Alec Young Engel, the UDFA, he's been an absolute slam dunk. How about this year's draft? Henry Ruggs, disappointing. Damon Arnett, when he's actually played, disappointing. Ryan Edwards, you're not even using him. I mean, Lynn Bowden Jr., you've already traded him away. You've already considered that a loss. Tanner Muse in the draft. I, I heard Tanner Muse, 100 overall. Bad training camp. Haven't seen him at all this year. Why? I get that he's hurt, but he didn't have a good camp either. Um, John Simpson, haven't seen him play. Amik Robertson, hasn't been good either. We're talking about a team that apparently should be able to draft, find all these players, and yet we're finding all these players in the draft, and they're not getting it done. And then you even go back to free agency. It's just really, really ugly. I'm getting fed up, and I think a lot of people are too. If you've made it this far in the video, y'all, I appreciate you. I'm glad that you're watching this show. Just don't, always, don't ever forget this. We do this show for Raider Nation, and if Raiders players come after you, if they come after me, I hope you have my back because I know I got yours. And if you are subscribed to the channel and you made it this far, drop us a like and take this link that you see below, youtube.com slash Raiders Send it to the biggest Raider fans you know. I would definitely appreciate it.